Ideal money. Charlie Munger called it rat poison. Warren Buffett called it rat poison squared. Jamie Dimon called it a fraud. Bob Schiller, a man who should know, called it a financial bubble. And Howard Marks said they are, quote, unquote, not real. If there was a Wheaties box for great investors and financial luminaries, these men would be on it. What are they all talking about? They're talking about Bitcoin. But we, the economics team at Payton Riggle, disagree. We think Bitcoin is the most important financial innovation, perhaps of all time, and it is one step closer to what John Nash of Nash Equilibrium and A Beautiful Mind fame called ideal money. Now, what do we mean by ideal money? Well, to think about ideal money, first stop is to think about the history of money. And the history of money is really the history of humankind. That's because humans have always needed a way to store value, to exchange value, and to transact to buy goods and services. And money has always played that role. But money has never been designed from the top down. Money has always been something that humans stumbled upon in different times and different places. Anything from shells to gold coins to later paper money and bank deposits and to credit cards today. But none of these forms of money have actually been ideal. They've all had pluses and minuses. Just think of the last 10 years in the global financial system. Much of the world depends on paper money, which can be quickly eradicated in terms of value by actions of central bankers in places like Argentina or Venezuela, or helicopter drops in the European Union and in the United States. And perhaps more importantly, to date, no form of money we have or have had works well in the digital world. And the economy is fast becoming more digital. Just think about when you scoot up to your computer to make your online purchases. First, you have to enter your credit card number. Then you have to find the expiration date and put that in. Then you have to find the four-digit code on the back of the card. And don't forget your zip code. And all the while, the company collecting your financial information is hoovering it up to auction it off to advertisers, foreign governments, and other nefarious characters. So there's no perfect form of money. So as economists, we sat down, we kicked this around. What would ideal money look like? If we were reimagining the financial system from scratch, what would be the attributes of ideal money? Well, we think you would want scarcity. Most forms of money historically needed scarcity to create value. We think the ideal form of money would be counterfeit proof, hard to seize, immune from politics, transportable, and resilient and global. And you may be surprised to see that most of the forms of money that we've had historically and currently use as money fall short on a number of these key characteristics. Gold, for example, while it may be scarce, it's not easy to transport worldwide. The Bundesbank found this out recently when they tried to move their gold from the New York Fed back to Frankfurt. It took them months of planning and transport and millions of dollars to complete the transaction. Paper money is anything but scarce, as we found out in Argentina and Venezuela and Zimbabwe. And bank accounts, while in the developed world, you may have a bank account, but much of the world does not have bank accounts and depends on paper money. They are also not immune from censorship and seizure, as we found out in Cyprus in 2013. But there is one form of money that is ideal, that checks all of these boxes. It was created 10 years ago, and that is Bitcoin. It is scarce. There will only ever be 21 million units. It is counterfeit proof and difficult to seize. It's depends upon public-private key encryption and a global ledger to prevent double spending. It is immune from politics. It depends instead on a computer algorithm and not on a committee of elite central bankers huddled up in some room in Washington, D.C. It is transportable worldwide, 24 hours a day, seven days a week with the click of a button. And it is resilient and global. It is dependent upon a, n a network of 11,000 nodes. So if one of them goes down, the network will still be up. It will still survive. The network has been up and running for 99% of the time over the last 10 years. So just like internet mail replaced traditional snail mail and opened up a world of possibilities, 
And internet encyclopedias replaced traditional encyclopedias and opened up the entire world to information. We think internet money is going to replace the traditional old financial system. It's not perfect. It's still in its infancy. The price has been volatile. But what we would say to those investors on that Wheaties box of great investors, they are a member of the financial elite. So the financial system already works for them. But this new form, a more ideal form of global money, will open up the financial system to everyone else. It is a global network. It is theft resistant, censorship resistant, not dependent on a single political authority. And it is a truly global form of money. If you were creating the financial system from scratch today, this is how you would create the ideal form of money. No one can tell you what's going to happen next, but we, the economics team at Payton, can't wait to find out.